Okay, so now I'd like to do a demo of Loyoscope 2. Um, when you start the software, uh, you can either start a new project or you can continue from a previous project. Um, and you, we also have these guides. And what these guides are, are just um, a simple way for users to uh, accomplish a task by following uh, each of the steps they need to take. Um, so, for instance, if I wanted to learn how to share videos and pictures on Facebook, I would just click this guide, and um, it would show this white box at the bottom. And this white box describes um, each of the steps that the user needs to take to finish a task. And we've made it very easy by having these uh, red circles um, to show where the user needs to look. And the user can also go forward at their own pace with these arrow buttons to, to move on to the next step. So if I click here, um, it'll tell me I need to click on the media browser. And as you can see, um, there's a red circle here on the media browser and it lets me know what I need to do next. Okay, so the basic software is a very simple interface. Um, it's based on click zoom. So what that is, is when you click on an area, it'll zoom on that area, and when you click again, it'll zoom out. So uh, let's just say I wanted to click on this timeline here. If I click on it, um, it'll zoom in so to the point where I can use it, and I can click on the desktop again to zoom out. Um, so we have uh, three very simple tools. On the left-hand side is the media browser, on the right-hand side is uh, the timeline, and on the bottom here is a, a DVD and Blu-ray creation tool, and I'll explain uh, each of them separately. So the media browser, uh, when you click on it, uh, it'll display all your videos, music, and picture files that are on your PC. Um, you can also plug in a SD card or a camera, and a new tab will be created, and you can use the files from there as well. Um, you can also back up your files, which will be displayed in this backup tab and you'll be able to see all the videos and pictures that you've backed up from your camera. And if you can't find any of the files you're looking for on your PC, um, you can click on this folder icon here on the left and you can select the folder that you want to display and you'll be able to look at the contents inside that folder. Um, you can also change how you want um, your, your files to be displayed in the media browser so uh, this is just the, the tree view. Um, it just shows uh, the file structure uh, that Windows has created. Um, you could also display it by in alphabetic order of uh, the folders. And you can also display um, the folder by date. Okay. Um, so there's two different ways. Um, you can begin editing uh, with Loyoloscope 2. Um, but before that, um, you need to <clears throat> find out which files you want to use and we've made that very easy with a mouse over preview so when you mouse over a file it'll instantly begin playing a preview and you can use the mouse wheel to fast forward or rewind the file to find which files uh, you want to use um, so once you've uh, found your files um, one way to edit is to to do some trimming on the desktop so you can click on a file and it'll be displayed on the desktop and so when you click on it again it'll begin playing um, on the bottom here you can see that there are various uh, editing tools um, we've made a trimming of the videos very easy by just moving these in and out points to surround the portion of the video that you want to use and that is it uh, if you want to do more detailed trimming um, you can use these frame forward and backwards buttons to select a portion of the video where you want to, to start and once you found it you can use this endpoint button and the endpoint will snap onto uh, the play position and you could do the same for the out um, you could select the portion and click the out point again and it'll snap right onto that um, you could also cut out various different scenes from a single video file so let me just uh, move these in and out points back. Um, so if I wanted to trim it up, um, I can select a portion and click on this cutout button here, which is the scissors. 
And once I do that, you can see that a new bagnet with uh, the original file name has been created. And um, the file that I just trimmed out will be here. And on the original file, um, you can see that all the portions behind the out point um, have been selected. So all I have to do is go back and move the in and out points again and keep making cutouts. And as you can see on the magnet, um, all the three videos that I cut out uh, will be placed on that magnet. And so all you have to do is place them onto the timeline, compose them, and you're ready to create your movie. Um, but there's also another way of creating your movie, which is much simpler, um, and this is with auto-editing. And what auto-editing is, is all you do is select the files you want to use, and the software will automatically create a video for you. So let me just select some uh, some files here. And to select multiple files, um, there's two ways you could do that. Um, one way is to select multiple files by right-clicking and creating this red line, and then drawing over these files to uh, multiple select them. Um, you can also select multiple files by clicking on these check marks on the bottom uh, left hand of the file. So let me select some images as well. And once you have your file selected, um, from the output menu, select Create a Slideshow Movie. And the software will automatically create a video for you. Um, here you can see a preview of the video, and with the scroll bar here, or with the seek bar here, um, you can get a look at your video. Uh, with the parameters here on the bottom, you can change the length of each photo between 3, 5, and 10 seconds. Um, you could select the transition style. Uh, you can select the final resolution of your video. And you can change the order of your files by either date created or the order selected. Um, the user can just create a file from here by clicking on output the file. Or they can do more advanced editing on the timeline by clicking on this advanced settings. And that will move all the files to the timeline. Um, on the timeline, you can see that um, all the files are bars, and each of the bars represent uh, the different files, and each file type has a different color. Um, so blue will be the videos, yellow will be pictures, um, text will be green, and audio files will be red. Um, you can also see that the various bars have different lengths, and these lengths correspond to how long the file is displayed. So the longer the file is, um, the longer it will be displayed. Um, so for instance, um, with image files, if you wanted to display it longer, you can move these in and out points, you know, longer or shorter, to change how long you want the file to be displayed. Uh, the timeline also has a hierarchy, so the higher the files are, um, the more in front uh, they'll be displayed. So just an example, I'll move this file um, on top of this video here. And as you can see, um, this image will be displayed on top of the video. Um, and that's because of the hierarchy. So what you want to do is you want to have the text on the top because it's it'll be displayed on the very front. Um, images and videos in the middle. And uh, music on, on, on the bottom of the timeline. So I'm going to move this back here. Um, okay, and also you'll notice that there will be in and out points for this timeline, and uh, in between these points are the portions that will be created in your final movie. Um, so you'll want to make sure that this out point is snapped to uh, the last file in your video. Okay, um, so on the timeline, uh, you could do some simple editing with the scissor tool here. So while your video is playing, um, if you find a portion that you want to uh, cut out. So let's just say I want to uh, cut out the portion of this video after here. Um, I can select the scissor tool and you'll see that the scissor icon will be displayed on top of the bar. So once I click it, uh, you'll see that it has been split into two. And I just select the portion I want to delete and click on the delete key and it will be removed. Um, Okay, so now that I'm done with the scissors, I can click on it to deactivate it. Um, but now we have this gap here, um, which is kind of unwanted. So I can use this backward selection tool to select all the files to uh, move them together. 
So I click on this and I click on the file and while with the mouse button held down I can slide it over and lay it on top of uh, the other bar to remove the gap. And then I can move this out point back and uh, close the gap on the end. Alright, so now that um, I have trimmed my videos, I need to add uh, some transitions for them. So I need to click on uh, the bar. And once I do, uh, you'll see these uh, transition tools here. And this uh, box with the hourglass like shape. Um, here I can select uh, a transition for the whole video. So if I wanted it to move to the right, I can select that. And as you can see, um, the transition will instantly be applied. Uh, with Loyal Scope 2, you can also add a transition for the <clears throat> beginning and end, and you can also set different transitions. So I select this bar here underneath um, the Style button, and I can select a transition for the beginning and end. So at the beginning, I'll uh, select uh, Move to Left, and for the end, I'll choose something different. Uh, I'll just move uh, choose Move to Top, and you can see that um, in the beginning, it'll move to the right, and at the end, it'll move to the top. And you can set uh, each of these transitions for each of the bars. Um, with pictures, um, you have a, this additional set button, and what this is is a it applies a Cam Burns effect to uh, your video and or to your picture. And what that is is it'll zoom in onto your picture or zoom out. Um, so in the screen, I can select um, you know a starting position. So if I wanted to start in the middle, and then I could set an ending position. So if I wanted to zoom in, I can uh, select that here, and then I can select the speed. And once I click OK, I can see that um, that effect was applied and that it zooms in. All right. Um, so what else you can do is uh, add text. So from this T button here, uh, we have two different types of text. We have a standard title text and end roll text, and I'll explain um, each of those individually. So once I click on the text, um, it'll create this green bar. And uh, text, um, it'll create a 10 second text by default. And as I explained earlier, you can make that longer or shorter with these in and out points here. Um, so once I have the text bar selected, I can add text on the screen here. So I'll just add a simple text that and then click on add text and as you can see uh, the text will be added. Um, here on the left side of the timeline um, all the tools for everything we do will be displayed so as you can see you can see the tools for the text and here you can change the font, you could change um, the size, you can give them color, give them a, a border or shadows and you could also fill the text box color as well. Okay, um, and one of the strengths of the, the Lolo software is that you can move this text in real time. So I can find um, a good position for the text to be in the video um, while the video is playing. Um, all right, we also have uh, a typing animation tool here, so you can animate um, how your text will be displayed. So if you're familiar with um, you know movies that'll have a typewriter-like effect where each uh, text will be displayed, you can set that here. All right. Um, so, oh yes, one thing I forgot to mention about the transition is that there, you can also uh, manually adjust them. Uh, let me go back to a video and show you. Um, so here we have a M button. Um, so text is usually uh, done automatically. Um, and that's because uh, these bars will overlap here and the portion that's overlapped will um, it'll automatically, automatically transition. Um, but if you wanted to set it manually, um, you can click this M here, and you can move these uh, in and out buttons and uh, these fade points. So the arrows will be the end, uh, start and end points, and you can change your transition timing with these in and out points here. Okay, um, so back to the text. Um, our second text tool is a uh, end roll text, and what this is is um, is a text similar scrolling text you see uh, similar to um, the credits you see at the end of movies. 
Um, so when you click on the text here, um, you'll see uh, on the left hand side that there'll be a text box. So you can add a uh, text here. So I'll just add uh, a couple lines of text here randomly. And you just add the text you want it, uh, the way you want it to be displayed. And when you play the video, you can see that um, it'll play in the way that I typed it. Okay, um, so you can uh, change the speed of the scroll with the slider here, and you can change um, the length of how long the text is displayed with the in and out points here. Um, just like the normal text, uh, you can change the font, size, color, border, and uh, shadow as well on the left hand side. Alright, so once you've added um, your uh, text and uh, videos, you can also add some background uh, music. So I'll go back to the media browser and uh, select some uh, some random music here. Um, so I'll select something like um, this, and I can uh, drag it onto the desktop and then drag it right onto the timeline. Okay, um, so here um, you can also edit um, the volume of your audio. Uh, and we've made this very easy with the display audio waveform button. So once you click this, it'll display um, the audio waveform on the bar. And for videos, um, these videos don't have audio. But if uh, your video has audio, it'll display um, the waveform there as well. So if I wanted to adjust the volume, I can click on this uh, volume button here for uh, the tab for this file and it'll display a line and as you can see it's a constant at 100% but if I wanted it to fluctuate like if I wanted the volume to go up or down um, I can move this um, slider here to adjust the volume to how I want it to be. Um, if I wanted to add um, uh, fluctuations at certain points of the video I can do that by um, adding these points here so I designate a start point, a dip point, and also an end point, and I can adjust the volume here. And as you can see by mousing over, um, the volume starts at 100, um, decreases down to 31%, and it goes back up to 100. Okay, so that's just an easy way to, to edit your audio to match your video. Alright, so once you have all your components together, um, you need to add some effects, and we've uh, we have some very unique effects um, in Loiloscope too, um, and we have these under the pen tools here on the timeline. And when you click on them, you'll see that we have various different pens, and I'll go over each of them individually. Um, so first of all, we have a, a pen tool, and what this allows you to do is write on the video uh, while the video is playing. So you can write a handwritten illustrations or text or whatever you want on the video. Um, so on the left hand side here um, you can choose the size, um, the style of the pen, and also the color. Uh, I'll choose uh, red here. And once you've got all that done you can click on start. I'll move the position here. The volume's a little bit high, so, the volume's a little bit high, so I'll lower it here. Uh, actually just for convenience sake I'll just remove it. Okay, so while the video is playing, um, I can you know, freehand draw lines onto the video. And if I go back, um, you can see that um, the line was drawn on the place and um, at the timing that uh, I drew it at. Um, if you wanted to delete the line at, the certain, at a certain point, um, you can go into the tools here and select delete all at the current time and it'll stop displaying that line after the time chosen. If you want to redraw, you can you know, uh, select these tools to restart. And if you wanted to move it, you can select the move, select the line, and move it um, on your screen. All right, uh, we also have a, a stamp tool, um, which is similar to the pen, but it uh, creates these objects on the screen as you draw them. Um, we have these different types of uh, stamps, so we have a spray, a roller, you know, a stamp for arrows, and we have animated stamps as well. So just to show you a spray, so I'll select uh, the star here, and again, just like the pen, I'll click on uh, Start, and while the video is playing, I can draw these uh, effects onto the video, 
And if I go back, um, you can see that the effects are added in the, the way that I drew them. Okay, um, so another effect that's uh, useful is um, this blur out pen. And with this age of uh, internet videos, it's very important to people to protect their privacy. And this blur out pen allows you to blur out specific portions of the video to hide um, faces or license plate or whatever else you want to hide. So once I select that, um, you'll see the similar tools like in the pen and stamp. Um, with the with the blur out tool, it's it's very difficult to try to blur out something that's moving in uh, real time. So you can change the speed here by selecting slow or super slow. So I'll select super slow. And while the video is playing, I can um, follow and cover the mosaic. Um, I can also make the pen bigger if I need to by using this mouse wheel here and make it bigger. And I could just follow along and add the mosaic. And uh, I click on this end blur pen here. And uh, as you can see here, the speed will go back to its original speed. And as you saw, um, the mosaic will be applied uh, to the location that I selected earlier. Okay. Um, if you wanted to add uh, other effects um, on the time left hand side of the timeline here, uh, we have these different tabs. Um, so as you can see, this is the timeline tab, and all these different effects are added to the timeline. And if I wanted to add another effect, uh, effect to all the videos on the timeline, I can select this colorful button here, and it'll show me the effects here, and I can mouse over to see how they would be applied. Um, if you wanted to add effects only to specific videos or files, you can select that file, and you can see that the new tab will be created. and uh, click on the effect button above that tab and you'll be able to select um, the different effects to be applied uh, to your file. Okay, um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, our software is easy enough for new users but advanced enough for the advanced users as well. And I'd like to show you some of the more advanced tools that we have. Um, so for instance, one tool we have is a, a time remapping tool. And what this does is it allows you to change uh, the speed of your video so you can make it faster, slower, or play in reverse. Um, so once I have the bar selected on the left hand side here, uh, we have this change speed here. Um, and you click on this uh, apply animation button and it'll create a cache file here. And so once it's created, uh, I'll just turn off this transition here and I'll zoom in by using the mouse wheel. Um, you can see that there's this change speed line, um, and what this is is a representation, a visual visual representation of the video playing from start to finish at a constant speed. Um, but if I wanted to change the speed, I can add points here, just like I did with audio, and I can move this up. Uh, I can create another point to move it down, and as you can see on um, the left and right hand side of each point, um, there's different percentages. And these percentages represent um, the speed that the video is playing at uh, before and after, respectively, um, these points. And as you can see here, it's at 365%, so it's playing at 3.65 times its original speed before this point here. And the point after that is uh, playing at 100 and, uh, negative 190%, so it'll be playing backwards at about two times um, the speed. So if I show you, um, it'll play really fast, and then it'll play really slow uh, in reverse, and then it'll play until the end of the video here. Um, you can you know, create all kinds of unique effects by playing around with the settings and create a unique video for yourself. Okay, um, just for simplicity's sake, uh, I'll just remove all the points here. Okay. Um, Alright, so uh, this needs to be edited out. Actually, screw that. Okay. Okay, uh, start here. Um, so, what you can also do is uh, create a 
um, you can insert a pause um, just for visual sake. I'll delete this blur out pen I applied earlier so that we don't have a blur here. Um, so if I wanted to create a pause like you see in movies, um, I can do that by uh, finding a scene. So if I wanted to add a pause here, um, I could select that scene and from the insert pause button here, I can click that. Yes, you need to select the timeline bar and click on the insert pause. Um, and here you can select the, the length of the pause and since it's creating an image uh, you can select the file format here so whether you wanted a JPEG or PNG and once you click OK um, you can see that this image was included um, in between uh, the files so if I play it here it'll play and then it'll have a pause and then it'll continue playing again. Um, so those are some of the more advanced tools that uh, Lotoscope offers. Um, so once you've uh, finished creating your video, um, you have to output it, um, whether it's a file or share it. And uh, you can do that here from the output menu. So once you click on output, you can see that we have various different output formats. Um, so I'll go over each of them individually uh, with the file output. Um, what it does is uh, it creates a file that can be played on a PC. Um, so we have uh, various different file formats here. Um, if your computer supports uh, NVIDIA CUDA or has a Intel Sandy Bridge processor, you can use uh, the CUDA to encode. Um, and if you have a Sandy Bridge processor, you can use the Quick Sync video and a button will be displayed here. And you can use that to quickly encode your videos as well. Um, you could also click uh, the audio button to just extract the audio from your video file if that's something you want to do. Okay, um, next we have uh, various um, web uploads. So with Facebook, um, you log in to your account and you enter the title and description and you could upload your video. Um, Facebook has a, a limit of 20 minutes or one gigabyte per file. And even if your videos go over that, uh, the software will automatically split it up for you and upload them separately. Uh, you could also upload your video to YouTube. Um, so like Facebook, you uh, log in and you can enter your uh, information here. Um, you could select whether to make your video public or private and upload the video. Um, with with YouTube, um, the limit is uh, 15 minutes, but even if you go over that, uh, the software will split it up automatically and upload them separately for you. Um, with uh, YouTube, you can also connect your uh, Facebook and Twitter account. Um, so if you have them enabled, um, after your video is uploaded to YouTube, it will automatically post uh, the link to your Facebook or Twitter account. Uh, with YouTube, you can also select to use um, CUDA to quickly encode uh, the video um, if, if your computer supports that as well. Um, lastly, we have uh, Vimeo. And what Vimeo is, is a, a YouTube's a YouTube-like video community, but it's more geared towards uh, creative users. Um, for instance, they only let you allow, uh, allow you to upload content that you've created yourself. Um, so once you've created an account and logged in, um, on the top here, um, you have 500 megabytes um, per up of uploads per week for a free account. And we've made it easy to see um, with this bar here. Um, you can enter the, enter the title and description of your video. So uh, it'll, my title of video, my video, description, so no, um, my video. Um, you can choose to apply a password and the unique thing about Vimeo is that it allows you to password protect your videos. So what we've created is a email form that allows you to email the link and password of your videos to the people you want to share to. So if you wanted to apply a password, you can apply a password here. So I'll just apply my simple password here. Um, and you can select whether to send email after the uploading is finished or not. And you can select the quality depending on how much space you have left. Um, so once you have all that done, you can click on next. Um, you can enter your name. So my name is Musato. Uh, you can select the recipient's email address. And on the right hand here, um, it'll remember who you've recently sent uh, email addresses to. And you can type in a message here. Um, and once you click confirm, you can see that uh, 
there will be a link to your video along with your password and your message will be displayed above it um, and this will be sent uh, to to the people you want to send it to okay um, so we also have a way to output files for Nico Nico Doga which is kind of a, a video sharing solution for uh, Japan um, it will only be displayed on uh, users who have a Japanese OS um, you can also create a file to be written back onto your camera. Um, this will not automatically put the file back onto your camera, but it'll create a file that can be put back onto your camera. Um, you can select a region and the camera type, and you'll have a file created for you that'll be ready to be written back to your camera. Um, you could also create a file to be watched on your portable device, um, just like the camera. It doesn't automatically put the file back onto your device for you, so you have to, uh, the users will have to do it automatically or manually. Um, but you can select a, a file that's optimal for your device, so for devices like iPad, iPhone, um, and etc. And you could also use the GPU to quickly encode uh, video files as well. Okay, uh, lastly, we have a DVD and Blu ray creation tool. And so once I click that, um, you can see that the timeline will be added onto uh, the file here, um, to the list here, and I can add more files from the media browser if I wanted to. So if I can go back and I select um, you know, other files um, like this, and then from the output menu again, I could either select the DVD Blu-ray creation tool, and it'll be added here again or I can uh, just drag and drop a file from the desktop onto the list and it'll be added here. Uh, we've tried to make this very easy um, to sort out uh, your list. Um, you can reorder them by dragging and dropping them um, or you can remove them from the list by clicking on this cancel here or dragging them outside of the list. Um, so when you create a DVD or Blu-ray, um, the chapters will be split up by each of the files in this list. So one file will be one chapter. So if you wanted to combine multiple video, individual videos, but don't want to necessarily do any additional editing, um, you will need to combine them on the timeline and make them one video, and then add them to the list to make them one chapter. Um, so once you've added all your files, uh, you could click on the select disk and select the, the disk type you want to create. Um, you can also click on a preview to view uh, the preview of your video. And you can click through the videos by clicking on the next one in the list or using uh, the mouse button, uh, sorry, uh, the keyboard arrow keys. Um, and we've added these uh, in and out points in the video so that you can do some last minute trimming uh, before you include uh, the file onto a disk and once you're done um, click on end preview to end your preview. Um, in the middle here you can see um, the, the drive that's being used um, to create your disk and you can also see how much uh, space is available left on your disk. Um, so once, all you've, once you've done all the settings uh, you can click on create disk and it'll show you uh, a menu design window so here um, you can select your own background. Um, you can select your own background image to use uh, for your title, or you can select one of the various templates that uh, we have provided with the software. Um, in the middle here, you can preview um, how your menu, our title menu, and chapter menus will look. Um, and the bottom here, you can add a title. You can select a background music, um, add a volume label if you wanted. Uh, you could change the title size. Um, with the repeat, you can select a uh, to create a disk that you know repeats itself, like you see in uh, in stores. And um, if you want to select your own background, you can select your own background from here. Um, so once you've done all that, you can click on Create Disk to create your own uh, video. <clears throat> um, so. Loscope 2 is not only an editing tool, but you can also use it as a converting tool as well. Um, so let's just say that you have uh, various files on your computer that you want to um, change to a single file format. Um, so you can select multiple files like this. 
and from the output menu um, you can select file output and uh, encode all of the different files into a single file format or um, you could also upload them to Facebook and YouTube um, all at once or um, you could also encode them for your portable device as well Okay. Um, so there is also several tools that you can use um, so as you saw in earlier um, you can use this magnet to organize your files so you can use this to separate the files you want to use or don't want to use or you can um, so separate uh, different scenes with different magnets um, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can change the name of the magnet by double clicking on this name and entering a name so if I wanted uh, it to be mag that one I can enter a name and um, to make it easier to separate uh, you could also change the color by clicking on the color wheel selecting color and you can easily select the color. Um, we also have uh, right-click uh, shortcuts, so for instance, if I wanted to move this file to a certain location, I can right-click in, and while I have it held, um, you can see all these different uh, files will be displayed. Um, just so I have the magnet included, I'll move this out separate. Um, so when I right-click it, um, you'll see that there's all these different locations I can send this to. Um, so anything with a heart is uh, a magnet. These circles here are the different timelines. Um, this disk here is uh, the DVD creation tool and um, this heart with the recycle mark is the trash can so if I wanted to quickly send it to one location so if I wanted to send it to the magnet um, I could just drag the mouse over on top of the magnet let go and it will automatically be sent there um, if I wanted to send it to the timeline right here I just let go on top of this and it will automatically add the file here Okay, so um, that's the end of um, the demo. Um, if you're looking for the guide, uh, you can find the guide here at the very top left. Um, you could click on it and select the guide here. Um, if you need to change some of the options, you can go on File and click on Options. And here you can uh, change some of the settings for the software. Um, you could see what GPU you're using under the GPU settings. Um, you can change the language under the language and also uh, other settings to help you play um, videos if you're having difficulty. Okay, um, so thank you for watching the demo and I hope you enjoy Loyal Scope 2.